मॉड्यूल टेन मोमेंट्स नॉर्मेलिटी टेस्ट्स एंड आउटलेयर्स सेक्शन नंबर टू नॉर्मेलिटी टेस्ट्स मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टैटिस्टिकल हाइपोथेसिस टेस्ट अस्यूम दैट यू नो आवर सैंपल्स ऑफ कम फ्रॉम पॉपुलेशन विच इज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड नॉर्मली दैट इज गाउसियन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो वॉट इज दिस अप्रॉक्सीमेटली गाउसियन मीन्स so is it exactly gaussian so if the how much deviation from the gaussian ideal is tolerated so these questions are highly complicated there is no actually perfect answer to it and if you try to interpret the shape of your histogram and decide that oh this is not really bell shaped and then you you say that this is not normal distribution then that would have, that would be a mistake that you are you are committing so there are formal tests in the statistics to decide is it actually normally distributed or not normally distributed so these are called the normality tests so you can of course you can plot a histogram to to know that you know these are just a subjective interpretation you see uh, whether the distribution is kind of normal or not normal but histogram is of course highly useful because you can see a lot of trends for example is it just one mod or bimodal distribution or is it a discontinuous distribution all these things we have already discussed it so only way to test the normality of distribution objectively is via the normality test so there are different kinds of normality tests but unfortunately microsoft excel has got no normality tests built in so you have to use software like graphpad prism for the normality tests so to test the deviation from the gaussian ideal is our data is significantly deviated from the gaussian or roughly similar to the gaussian that is what the normality test is one of the commonly used normality test is called the agostino pearson omnibus k2 normality test so the name of the test is very complicated the agostino pearson omnibus k2 normality test or omnibus k2 or simply k2 normality test is uh, quite commonly used so it is based on the skewness and kurtosis remember in the last section we learned how to calculate the skewness and the kurtosis so these are in turn depends upon the moments so the third moment and the fourth moment you see and both also depends upon the m2 the second moment so it gives you the test gives you the a p value which test the k2 omnibus test that will give you a p value that is probability value so we will see the p values in later sections so module number 13 uh, we will will cover in depth what the p values are all about so the p value is nothing but it's a probability that your data deviates from the gaussian so you tend to get uh, a very high p value if it is kind of okay with the gaussian but if the p value is very low that means it's significantly deviating so that's not a good news if you get a very low p value so in this omnibus k2 normality test so cannot be performed in microsoft excel i told you but you can do that in the graphpad prism so if you are getting a high p value that means that the distribution is more or less uh, you know uh, tolerated and it is more or less normally distributed but if you are getting a low p value that is less than 0.05 so usually in the p value the threshold is you know 0.5 that is also known as two sigma threshold so if it deviates significantly from the gaussian so that is what it, you know if you are getting a very low p value in it so in the graphpad prism it's actually very easy to do that so you also please have a look on the screencast that i have uploaded separately into the uh, the, the mooc so in this one these are this just the screenshots of how to do that so in the the graphpad prism in the main window just go to the new analysis and column statistics and in the pop up uh, there will be an option called detect outliers so the in the next window there will be different kinds of Uh, outlier tests available there are three tests are there so of which you can just choose one of the test so this is the result window that is being displayed after you run the test which is almost instantaneous here the p value is 0.37 which means it is less than 0.05 so you know if if the uh, the p value is actually uh, uh, it's not less but it's higher than 0.05 so it, as you see it's a 0.3 it's higher much higher than 0.05 so if you are getting a high p value that means that deviation is not significant deviation from the gaussian ideal is not significant that means your distribution is more or less normally distributed so it's it's a good news you know you can go ahead with 
parametric test like standard deviation or ANOVA or whatever you would like to go with. There are other normality tests as well for example, Shapiro-Wilk test or Kolmogorov smirnov test. So, all these tests you can do that. In the case of Kolmogorov smirnov test, you need 5 or more values. So, if you have a less than 5 value, none of these normality tests will work. And uh, in the case of Shapiro-Wilk test, you need 7 or more values. And in the case of Omnibus K2 test, you need 8 or more values. But it is always better to have a lot of uh, a value, I mean a lot of uh, uh, elements in your data set for, to uh, infer these statistical measures because these are especially the omnibus K2 depends on the skewness and kurtosis and as I already explained the skewness and kurtosis do depend on the sample size. So, ideally it has to be more than 3000, but there are alternative to assuming that the sample is uh, came from a population which is Gaussian. For example, you can identify some other uh, you know distribution by looking at the uh, histogram and then you can transform into the Gaussian by for example, log transformation from the you know the uh, uh, log distribution. So, you can also ignore a small departures from the Gaussian because the statistical tests are designed such a way to tolerate minor uh, uh, you know departures or violations from the Gaussian idea. So, you can either switch to a non-parametric test will be the last option or you can also identify and remove the outliers. So, how can you detect these outliers and how can you remove the outliers will be discussed in length in the next section. But the switching to the non-parametric test should be done uh, at the end. So, because uh, if none of those above works then you can of course, there is no other choice for you. So, you can uh, switch to non-parametric matter. But Again, it is kind of tricky decision because the non-parametric method, you know, the power is not as good as the parametric method. So, we will discuss about the power later. So, in summary, normality tests are used to test whether the frequency distribution of our data set is normal, that is Gaussian or not. So, D. Augustino Pearson Omnibus K2 normality test is the most popular test, though it is not supported in Microsoft Excel. So, the test can be performed in GraphPad Prism software. The test is based on the kurtosis and skewness values. If the normality test confirms that the distribution is not normal, it is unwise to switch directly to a non-parametric test because the statistical power is not good. Other options such as transforming to the Gaussian, you know, ignoring mild departures from the Gaussian and removing the outliers etcetera should be done first before switching to a non-parametric test. So, uh, please uh, be aware that I have also uploaded uh, uh, the screencast recordings of the normality test, how to perform the normality test on the graph pad prism separately. So, as part of the graph pad prism training.